viewers welcome back to digitalk and in this session i am going to explain you how you can configure the horizontal clustering in the weblogic server okay horizontal clustering in the sense we where we have the uh, multiple managed servers which is scattered across the different machines okay so this is a, one of the feature in weblogic where you can have a cluster which can span across the different machines for the high availability okay and means you will have a one domain inside that domain you will have a cluster which will be span across the multiple machines okay so uh, for that i am going to follow this uh, uh, lab document of the digitalk okay if you if you would like to buy this particular uh, document along with the other 34 or 35 pdf lab document from the digitalk along with the weblogic server handbook okay then you can write us on digitalk.fmw@gmail.com okay we will send you the details how you can buy all this document okay apart from this we have a lot of other document that contain the step by step information just i am going to explain in this document with the execution and the screenshot okay so that you don't need to go anywhere for the training itself and you can be be expert by your own okay so for uh, the architecture in this lab we have a two machines host a and host b so what we will do we will create two managed servers and with a one cluster which will be a span across both machines and we will have two managed servers with the name c server underscore one and c server underscore two running on port 7003 on the two different servers right the port will be same because they are on two different machines if you have a server running on the same machine then you have to use the different port because you can't run the multiple uh, processes uh, on a single port on a single machine right and apart from that we will have a independent different node manager on each machine okay and this is the particular details of the host that we are going to follow in this particular lab right so first thing you have to download the software for downloading the software we have explained the each step by step process in this particular lab document uh, how you can uh, download the software directly on your linux machines or maybe on the windows machines from the e delivery directly from the oracle portal to your machine so you don't need to go for the staging like you have to download on your local machine and then to copy it on the linux machine you have some ways okay where uh, a script will be provided by the oracle and then which you can copy on your machine and then with the help of that then you can download the software directly on your linux machines okay then after that we have to first we have to do the installation of the jdk it's just a simple process you have to extract the tar file okay and apart from that you can create a soft link which we have explained in the weblogic uh, installation uh, document okay of uh, this particular lab exercise okay and then you can create a soft link so why we we can create a soft link is because uh, when we install the weblogic okay after that there are a lot of uh, places where uh, the jdk is referenced in your configuration files okay so when you go for the jdk upgrade if you have a dedicated uh, folder with the name of the jdk version in your each and every file then you have to upgrade the uh, the jdk and then you have to change each and every file right so if you if you if you will follow a similar uh, a pattern okay for example if, if you will create a soft link with the name of jdk when this particular soft link you are going to use in your configuration files then you don't need to upgrade your uh, then you need to update your uh, each and every configuration files whenever you go for the upgrade of jdk okay so uh, apart from that you can follow the standard process of installation of the weblogic okay and make sure to uh, install your weblogic on the same oracle home on each and every machine so here in this document we, we have a two host if you have a multiple host then you can follow the same document for that as well okay and then whatever the instruction that we have been following on two nodes you have to follow it on each and every node right and once your installation is done in a particular location on each and every host first the first thing that we have to create a domain okay so now we have a different uh, ways when we go for the horizontal clustering for example uh, someone prefer to create a domain uh, say a plain domain from the using configuration wizard and then after after that uh, uh, you can start the admin server and then you can create the domain from the admin console as well okay but the common approach and the recommended approach is you can do the uh, configuration of your domain from the configuration wizard okay for each and every host and then you can pack and unpack the domain on each and every host right so for that we have to run the config.sh command okay this is uh, uh, the wizard with that we use for the configuration of the domain the location of this particular wizard is inside the oracle home you will have a folder called oracle underscore common inside that you will have a folder with the name common and then bin inside that you will find a, this particular file right so run this particular config.ss wizard okay and let me explain you the important screen that you have to make sure to provide the right values when you are going for a horizontal clustering this is the first screen which is basic screen we have to provide uh, the location of your domain <clears throat> and have to select the create a new domain location right and then you have to select the default uh, the template location template of your web logic server 
right then you have to provide the username and password for your admin console and then you have a two mode of, do of the domain either de development and production so when you are going for the installation in the live environment then you can select the production domain but if you are configuring it for the non uh, fraud environment for example development testing quality then you can go for the development port of the domain right and then you can select the jdk location from here so you can either choose the location of your soft link here instead of uh, selecting the hard link of the uh, jdk folder right and then you can select the topologies admin server node manager and topology all these options because we are going to configure the every configuration for the horizontal clustering via the admin console okay so when you select the administration server that means you are going to modify some settings of the admin server which is allowed okay and then uh, when we uh, when we select the node manager that means we are going to configure some settings for the node manager like the location the type of node manager that you are going to create uh, the default one is the per domain right that means for each and every domain we will have a separate node manager and then during the topology we will have to add the manage servers and then we have to create the machines node manager ports and a lot of other things like clustering that we have to follow okay so for admin server you will get this screen you can enter a name for your admin server so you can select the listen address listen port okay if you would like to enable the demo ssl then you can enable the ssl option as well okay so uh, the best approach when we go for the configuration of a domain for the listen address you can select the IP address of the primary machine on which your uh, admin server is supposed to run, either DNS or the IP address. Okay, so here when you click on the draw box, you will see the local IP or local host address here. But this is a editable field. That means you can copy paste the IP address or DNS directly in this field. Okay, so you can take the DNS or IP address of your host machine and copy paste it here. This is the recommended approach and always always follow this particular approach when you are configuring a domain. Okay, don't specify the local address unless you are uh, doing certain kind of installation on your local machine for some demo and testing purpose okay and then you have to select the per domain default location <coughs> and then specify the username and password for your node manager okay so the best approach uh, for specifying the username and password for node manager is you can specify the same username and password that we give when we do the installation of the uh, web logic and then when we configure the admin server right so uh, I will show you that later. Okay, but uh, let me show you the admin username password screen. Okay, so after okay after giving the template, we have specified the username and password for our admin console, right? So the same specific username and password you can specify here as well. Okay, for the node manager, this is the best practice. Even you have an option, you can go for a different username and password for node manager as well. Okay, but make sure to note that particular thing, and then you can uh, specify it somewhere on your internal portal on some of your cheat sheet okay so that you uh, do not forget that username and password right so after that you can uh, create two uh, managed servers from the next option which is for the uh, managed server so here you can note that when we have created the servers we have specified the ip address of the corresponding machine okay make sure you are specifying the ip address of corresponding machine otherwise you will not able to start the servers when you will go for the starting of the server from the console okay so here uh, you will see a dropbox option for the listen address but this is an editable option okay so you can directly copy and paste your ip address of the corresponding machines here so for server one i have given the ip address of my machine one and for server two i have given the ip address of my second machine port i am going to use the same 7003 and 7103 for both because they are going to run on the different servers so this is one of the important configurations you have to make sure to specify the proper listen address for your managed servers okay and then you can create a cluster specify a name for a cluster and go for the default settings and then uh, skip for the server template and then skip for the dynamic cluster screen okay and here you have to specify the cluster manage server to the cluster okay so click on the cluster name then click on your manage servers and then click on this right arrow so you can specify all your manage server to the cluster right and then we have to create two different machines so again this is a very important screen when we go for the horizontal clustering so because we have a two machines we have a uh, horizontal cluster of two machines so we have to create a two machines here and to each and every machine we have to specify the corresponding machine listen address this is again a very important configuration so machine one i have given the ip address of my machine one and for machine two i have given the ip address of this particular machine Two. the port i am going to use the same 5556 on the both machines because they are running on two different machines so i can give the same port right similarly if you have multiple machines like in this particular document we have a two node cluster if you have a three four or five or six or more than that then you have to create a machine for each and every server and then specify the corresponding ip address 
So although you are seeing a Dropbox, as I said, it is editable. So you can copy paste your uh, particular machine DNS or IP address here in the field, right? So uh, the first very important screen I have shown you when you configure the managed servers, you have to specify the IP address of that particular machine in which this support server is supposed to run. So here's so we have two servers. If you have more than two servers in the clustering, then you can create more than uh, two servers and then specify the IP address of that corresponding machine. And similarly here, you have to create different machines for each and every host. And then for that, you have to specify the corresponding IP address, right? And now just like the, uh, the cluster, you have to assign the managed server to each and every machine, right? But make sure you are specifying the managed server to the corresponding machine, right? Because here for managed server one, we have created the machine one. And for managed server 2, we have created the machine 2, right? So that means the managed server 1 will have to assign to machine 1 and managed server 2 have to assign to machine 2, right? Similarly, if you have more than that, then uh, assign the, uh, the managed server 3 to machine 3, managed server 4 to machine 4, similarly in the same order. So here, I have assigned the managed server 1 to machine 1 and managed server 2 to machine 2. It's the same thing. You can just click on machine, then here click on the server name and click on the right arrow and then it will get assigned. Right. So now you can see here, this is a summary of the domain. What we, what we are going to have in our domain is we will have two managed servers, one admin server and we have one cluster. Okay. Then click on the create. Okay. It will take some time and then your domain will be ready. It will show you the location of your domain and the default IP location or URL of your admin server. Right. After that, you can test whether your server is coming up or not. So as of now, we have configured everything on the machine one. Okay. Right. We have nothing on the machine two apart from the plain installation. We have configured the domain on machine one, right? So you can start the node manager on machine one, go inside the domain and run the command start node manager. And you can see your node manager is coming up or not. Okay. Similarly, you can start your admin server as well. Okay. And then you can see where, whether your admin server coming up or not, right? So we have created the domain in, in the production mode. So when you are going to start your admin server, it will prompt you for the username and password. Right, until and unless you are going to create the boot properties file manually. Right, so if your admin server is up and running, coming up, then you can shut it down. Okay, you, you can test it and you can shut, shut down after that one. And now what we will do, we will copy or you can set the pack and unpack the domain on the other machines. Right, so we have two machines created during the configuration of the domain. So now to create the uh, pack of your domain, Okay, you have to go to your uh, Oracle home. That means the installation directory, Oracle underscore common, common bin. And here you will have a script called pack.sh. This is script you can use for the creation of the domain. Pack, or you can say the tar file of your domain or a pack file of your domain. And the uh, syntax is hyphen domain. This bin and then the location equal to then the location of your domain. Hyphen template in which template file it is going to pack your domain. This is the location that I have given. And then template name, you have to give a random name for a template and then hyphen manage equal to true. So this will create the domain.pack.jar file inside your user1 app location. Now you have to take this particular jar file and you have to copy it on each and every node where we are going to unpack it, right? So in this document, we have two hosts and the first host, we have already created a domain where we are, where our admin server is going to run. So we are going to copy this to our secondary machine. Okay. You can use SCP or any command for copy of the, this particular jar file, right? Uh, to your uh, secondary machine. Similarly, you can copy the same file for the multiple other machines as well. If you have a, uh, not two, you have a more than two node of uh, clustering, three, four or five, anything. Okay. Copy it on every machine, right? So once it is copied, then again, because we have an installation on each and every machine. So go to the same location where we saw the pack file and there you will see a unpack file as well. Okay. There is a file called unpack.sh. Use the same command and the syntax will be hyphen domain. This is the location of your domain. And this is the template that we have copied from each and every server. Run this command. This will extract and create the domain on that particular machine. Okay. If you have multiple machines, more than two, then run this command on each and every node. Okay. So it will unpack the domain on each and every node. Right. So that means our horizontal clustering is done. So now we have to start the services and test the services. Right. So now because we have already tested the services on node one, admin server, and then uh, your node manager. Now you can start the node manager on secondary machine. Validate whether it is coming or not. Okay. And then you can start it on the background. Okay. And so once it is running, you can start your admin server. Okay. And before starting the admin server, as I said, you have to create a bootload properties file, right? Otherwise it will keep prompting you for the username and password. So for that, go to your domain root folder of, of the servers. That means inside the domain, you will have a folder called servers. 
inside server you can go to the admin server folder create a directory with the name of security go inside security and create a booter properties file and inside that specify the username and password in the format username equal to this and password equal to this whatever the username and password you have and then you can start your admin server right so after that you can go to the consoles and do the verifications whether your machines are reachable or not and then you can start your admin or manage server from the console as well select the uh, both of your manage servers go to control tab and start the servers and then after that if everything is good then you will see your server is up and running after some time and then you can after that you can do certain kind of a validations okay with the help of command as well so this is the way how you can configure the horizontal clustering in the weblogic server thank you